Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If we can, inshallah, come a little closer, brothers, barakallah fikum, maybe to make a, a quick circle, inshallah, barakallah fikum. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaq as samawati wal arda wa ja'ala al zulumati wal nur, thumma alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'dilun. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما All praise is due to Allah we praise him, we worship him, we seek his assistance, we seek his tawfiq, we pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us, and we pray to him to give us the tawfiq to apply it. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Tonight is the night of the 21st of Rabi'i Thani of the year 1440 since Hijrat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which translates into uh, December the 29th of the Gregorian calendar 2018. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night, to make all the brothers and sisters who are joining us in this Masjid al Mubarak. Masjid Dar al-Qur'an in Chicago to make them Mubarakin in themselves and in their families and also the brothers and sisters who might be tuning in live to make everybody Mubarak, blessed in themselves and in their families. Allahumma ameen. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this majlis a majlis Mubarak which is the first of three majalis. As you know, um, today is the second day of this winter conference for winter break conference for the year 2018, which is uh, going on at, Maj at Masjid Dar al-Qur'an. Uh, this is the first of those majalis. Uh, the topic is on uh, the objectives of the Sharia, ah, maqasid al-Sharia. Ah. Um, the first majlis will be after Asr. We're going to keep going until Maghrib, inshallah. The second majlis will be after Maghrib. And then the third one will be after Isha at 6. Uh, and then, inshallah, we're going to uh, finish by 7.30. Uh, and there will be dinner bi idhnillahi ta'ala. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make these majalis, majalis ilm and majalis mubaraka. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with his mercy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our ja'izah, our reward when we are done, is that it will be said to us, go for you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. I know we started a little bit late behind the schedule, but inshallah we'll try our best to make up. And with that said, and without further ado, Rabbi Shahli Sadri wa Yassirli Amri Wahlul Uqdatam Min Lisani Yafqahu Qawli. Allahumma Ameen. So, Al Maqasid al Sharia, objectives of the Sharia. Um, in these three majalis that we're going to have tonight, bi idhnillahi ta'ala, we're going to touch upon this topic. We're going to try to look into what the objectives of the Sharia ah mean, what we mean by that. Uh, this is a topic, as we're going to see, is an important topic. Not too many people have heard about it, but it is a very practical and a very important topic. And you're going to see, inshallah, hopefully you'll benefit from this discussion. And you're going to see that it will actually make your perspective of the Sharia ah so much better and will make you understand the Sharia ah and the ahkam of the Sharia ah in a better way that will hopefully lead us to glorify and appreciate the Sharia ah of Allah wa ta'ala a lot more which will make us more obedient to Allah 
تبارك وتعالى مقاصد الشريعة is a science is a علم علم مقاصد الشريعة it's a science it, it's a discipline in the sharia of Allah تبارك وتعالى what do we mean by مقاصد الشريعة what do we mean by the objectives of the sharia now obviously this term is composed or made up of two words right مقاصد and الشريعة objectives of the sharia so we have objectives مقاصد and الشريعة Sharia is, it is no secret to any, to, uh, to your honorable knowledge. We all know what the Sharia means, which is the set of rules and uh, judges, uh, judgments uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed, al-ahkam and the rules and the rulings that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed and sent down upon one of his messengers, alayhim salatu was salam, or the prophets. Now, obviously, when we mean sh- when what, when we say Sharia now, we mean the Sharia al Islam, which is the Sharia that was revealed upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is in particular the Sharia that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is the Sharia that we follow. قال رب العزة والجلال ثم جعلناك على شريعة من الأمر فاتبعها ولا تتبع أهواء الذين لا يعلمون إنهم لن يغنوا عنك من الله شيئا وإن الظالمين بعضهم أولياء بعض والله ولي المتقين Then we have put you meaning يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم upon a plain way of commandment So follow you that and follow not the desires of those who know not Verily they can avail you nothing against Allah Verily, the oppressors are awliya of to one another. And then he said, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala finished the ayah by saying that Allah azza wa jal is the wali of the muttaqeen, is the helper, is the protector, is the ally, is uh, 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 loves al-muttaqeen, those who observe taqwa to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, which means that whoever, notice that in the ayah he's talking about the sharia. So which means that whoever follows the sharia, Allah Azza wa Jal will protect them, will be their ally, will be their friend who loves them and preserves them and support them and supply them with his tawfiq and help and ease from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who follow the sharia, obviously it means that they also um, stay away from the desires, their own desires and the desires that take them away from the sharia of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So now we, we, we've studied what the Sharia means, al-maqasid. What do we mean by al-maqasid? Objectives. Al-maqasid is a plural. Obviously, we're translating it as objectives. The first, the one, the singular of it, the one objective is al-maqsad. So al-maqasid, the plural, the singular is al-maqsad. What do we mean by maqasid al-Sharia? Maqasid al-Sharia are those broad meanings, those universal meanings that the rulings of the Sharia, the ahkam of the Sharia have been legislated to achieve. So Maqasid al-Sharia are those broad and universal meanings that Allah Azza wa Jal intended, wanted to achieve from these rulings that he legislated subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say meanings, we mean by that the goals and the objectives. What Allah, Allah, what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted that the people achieve by following those rulings and those rules in the Sharia. When we say that those broad and universal it means that these are the major aspects of the Sharia. Yani they have to do with the major aspects of the Sharia. These are the ones that apply to a lot of the rulings of the Sharia. Because some of the meanings and some of the objectives may be limited to certain areas of the Sharia, certain specifics of the Sharia. When we talk about al maqasid we, we are talking about the bigger picture. The bigger picture of the Sharia, which are meanings that you can find in a lot of the rulings of the Sharia, if not all of them. 
things that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from the vast majority, if not all of the rules and ahkam of the Sharia of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. These are the things that Allah Azza wa Jal intended from the Sharia, which means that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted people to notice, wanted people to actually observe and understand that these are objectives that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted people to achieve. In a way, if you look at it, the ones, the ones who understand the objectives of the Sharia, they can they can be sure that they are understanding all of the Sharia because they summarize in a way those objectives of the Sharia are like the summary, the summary of the Sharia of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. With that said, we have to distinguish between maqasid, which is the term that we just explained and, and defined, and other terminologies that are also used in the Sharia that may be confused with al maqasid. Example of that, al-ilal, the reasoning. Have you er ever heard of the term al-ilal, which is a plural of al-illa? Have you heard of the term illa? which are the reasoning that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned for a specific rule or hukum or several, a handful of them, that they are the reasoning for those hukum, for this hukum or for these ahkam. This is used in the books of fiqh that these, this is the illah behind this hukum. But there is a distinction, but there is a difference between al-illah and between al-maqsid. Let's take a look at what the difference is so that we don't confuse them, so that we can distinguish between al-maqsid and between al-illah. For, for one, one difference is that al-maqsid al-shari, the, shari, the uh, objective of the sharia, ah, has to do with a universal and broad meaning. Bigger picture. While al-illah has to do with a specific ruling or set of rulings, a handful, a few of them, that this illa is the reasoning behind them. So the ilal has to do with some branches, offshoots of some aspects of the sharia. Ah. Al-maqsid has to do with the bigger picture, all of the sharia ah or the vast majority of the sharia. Ah. You see the difference? So they are at a different levels. Ilal have to do with specific rulings. Al-Maqsid has to do with all of the Sharia. Ah. And that is why, like we said, Al-Maqsid, you can see this apply to a lot, the vast majority, or all of the ahkam of the Sharia. Ah. Al-Ilal has to do with a set, a handful, a few of their ahkam. Second difference, Al-Maqsid, is something that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted people to achieve. Is something that Allah Azza wa Jal intended behind the rules of the Sharia. Ah. While al-ilal are things that description of scenarios, of situations that necessitate a specific rule, but that may not be necessarily intended by the Sharia ah of Islam, by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Let's take an example so that it becomes clearer. We all know that stealing is forbidden in the Sharia of Islam, right? We all know that. This is no secret to any of your honorable knowledge. The punishment, the specific punishment, al qisas, that is, that applies in the case of stealing, is to cut the hand. Cutting the hand is connected to stealing, right? So we say that stealing is a illa, is a reasoning behind cutting the hand. Now obviously we're not going into the details. It has to meet a specific condition. It, it has to be stealing of a, at least a specific um, minimum amount or minimum value. Beyond that, then if somebody does that, then the qisas is to cut the hand. Now obviously we know that stealing is not something that Allah Azza wa Jal intended from us. Does Allah Azza wa Jal want from us to steal? 
Is this something that Allah Azza wa Jal intended? Obviously not. It's not something that Allah Azza wa Jal intended, yet it is a reasoning behind cutting in the case of stealing. So this stealing is the illah for the qata, for the cutting of the hand. Allah Azza wa Jal made it as a reasoning that describes a specific scenario. What is the hukum? To cut the hand. But it is not something that Allah Azza wa Jal intended that every Muslim steals, obviously. That is inconceivable. But the hukum of cutting, the ruling of cutting the hand, is the basis of that is stealing. If somebody steals, then this is the illa behind the qisas, which is to cut the hand. What is al-maqsid from this? Now this hukum, which is the qisas, the punishment, the, code, the punishment code, which is to cut. What is the maqsid behind that? This is a ruling, this is a hukum in the sharia. What did Allah Azza wa Jal intended now behind that? What do you say? What is al-maqsid? Why did Allah Azza wa Jal legislate cutting the hand in the case of stealing to protect people's wealth to protect hifz al-mal to protect people's wealth so that no, people don't start stealing from others people you know this person steals from that property and, and it will be becomes chaotic rule of the forest as they say to protect people's and preserve people's wealth money and wealth at large in general, this is why this hukum was legislated. You see the difference? Another, so this is, this is one terminology that we have to distinguish. Al-illah. Al-illah is something and al-maqsid, what Allah Azza wa Jal intended is another, another thing. There is another term that, that also the scholars use that also need to be distinguished from al-maqsid and that is the wisdom al-hikmah what is the hikmah behind the hukum behind the ruling al-hikmah is also a meaning that allah azza wa jal has observed right behind the hukum that there is a wisdom behind this ruling let's take an example Obviously, examples always make things clearer. We're going to see a lot of examples, by the way, throughout this discussion. Not only that, you've been forewarned. We're going to be using a lot of ayat, a lot of ahadith. It's a good thing. I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, but you've been warned. There will be a lot of ayat, a lot of ahadith. Everything will be relied on the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one who is journeying and traveling, right? Wujub al-sawm, the duty of fasting, let's say for example somebody traveling during the month of Ramadan, right? Obviously during the month of Ramadan there is wujub al-sawm, right? It is a duty to fast. During while journeying, while fasting, the duty to fast is removed from that person. So they don't have to necessarily fast. They can break their fasting while journeying. Also, they may shorten the prayers, right? Type. What is the wisdom behind that? What is the meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal observed from legislating, removing the duty to fast, right? And the permissibility to shorten the prayers or combining the prayers. What is the wisdom behind that? The burden, the burden that becomes upon the person. It may not be easy to fast. It may not be always easy to pray on time. It may not, so you can combine, you can bring it for, forward. You know, you can, for example, combine Dhuhr and Asr. You all know that. This is from your honorable knowledge. You can shorten the prayer. It may not, it may be a burden. It may be overburdening the person to pray at the, the, the same uh, number of raka'at as you do while you are in city or where you, when you are not journeying. So there is a mashaqqah, there is a burden on the person. The wisdom is to remove that burden. 
So the wisdom behind this permissibility not to fast and permissibility to shorten the prayer is this burden that becomes upon the person. What is al-maqsad? So now we have one example, journeying. And what is attached to that? Safar. What is attached to that is the permissibility not to, not to fast, the permissibility to shorten the prayer. So now let's try to identify what is the illa, what is the wisdom, and what is the maqsad. Al-illa is safar. The reasoning is the journeying. So the journeying, so this is the illa. That is the basis for shortening the prayer and the permissibility not to fast. Wisdom behind it is the burden, al-mashaqqa. What is the maqsid? We're talking about al-maqasid and we're trying to distinguish between these terminologies. Who can help us with what the maqsid is? Al-maqsid, what Allah Azza wa Jal intended, is a taysir wa takhfif, is to make it easy upon people and to lessen the burden, to lighten the burden. Allahu Akbar. Are you thinking, are you understanding what I'm saying? Allah Azza wa Jal intended ease, takhfif, and a taysir. He doesn't want to overburden us. He wants to lighten the burden, to lighten the burden of, from us and to make it easy upon us that is why he made journeying as a reasoning illa, to shorten the prayer and the wisdom behind it is that there will be a mashaqqa there will be a burden if we have to pray full prayers everybody understood that طيب. can i test you طيب. who can tell us who can refresh our memory what is the illa? What is the hukmah, the wisdom? And what is the maqsid, the objective of this particular case, journeying, and the related ahkam, the related rulings? What is the illa? What is the wisdom? And what is the objective, the maqsid? We just said it. Al illa is journeying. Al hikmah, wisdom. Burden. The burden. Tayyib. Al Maqsid, what did Allah Azza wa Jal intend from shortening the prayer or legislating the permissibility to shorten the prayer to make it easy on us? Allahu Akbar. Allahumma lakal hamd. You see? Tayyib. Now we've distinguished between the different terminologies. Is this an important thing to, to study? Is maqasid, studying the maqasid is sharia, objectives of the sharia, is this something important to understand? What do you say? It is important? It is important. Why is it important? It is important for multiple reasons. The first one, it is important to be mindful and to understand maqasid is sharia because whoever neglects this, neglects studying the maqasid of the sharia, have been or ended up into a, uh, a few matters where they would apply the wrong ruling. They would apply the wrong ruling if they did not, because they did not understand, they did not observe the objectives of the sharia. Let's take an example. I told you there will be a lot of examples. A person who is sick and recovering and fasting will negatively impact that person's health. Somebody comes and they say without looking into the maqasid of the sharia, ah, they say you must fast. Why? Because you're able to fast. You're able to fast, so you must fast. But we know that it is going to negatively impact the recovery of that person from his illness. So then, if you do that, then you're actually overburdened. You're making this sharia harder on that person than that, that, that need be. And you're not observing the, maqad, the maqsad of the sharia, which is that Allah Azza wa Jal intended for people 
to take the means, the asbab, to take care of their health, of their body, and try to lengthen their lifespan so that they worship Allah Azza wa Jal more and for a longer period of time. Allahu Akbar. We are to try and strive and take care of this body in our health, right? And cure our body so that it is healthy, so that this would be a means, sabab, for a longer life and spending that longer life in obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, performing al-ibadat for a longer period uh, of time. This is a maqsid that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted and intended for us. And if a person in this case fasts, and obviously which means that most likely that he will miss medication, he won't be able to take the medication, the necessary medication that will improve his health and make his recovery quicker, that will be it at odds, fly at odds in, in the face of this maqsid that we just mentioned, that Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to live a healthy life. They will say, fasting is good. No, no, go ahead and fast. But they're missing the maqsid that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from this. And this will be a bigger benefit because if they live a longer life, if they take care of this body, not neglect it and neglect their health, if they live a longer life, then they will be able to perform more ibadat. And it means that will be more reward from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Which is a, be a bigger benefit? What say you? Longer life and more ibadat. This is a bigger benefit. طيب. So you see that if somebody neglects this, then they will end up in the, with the wrong ruling, doing the wrong things. طيب. Another example. Some people who don't necessarily understand what, are, what the objectives of the ibadat are and the objectives of the sharia are, they will apply it in a wrong way. For example, somebody who doesn't understand that it is not from the objectives of the sharia to overburden yourself and that make, to make the ibadah harder on you than it need be. This is not something that Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. And you see somebody, for example, that comes and say, I am going to go and uh, uh, go to Hajj walking. Why? Because this will actually means that I will put more effort. It will be harder on me thinking erroneously that they will get more reward from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. I'm going to go walking. We say that's not intended. Allah Azza wa Jal did not intend. It's not an objective from this ibadah of Al-Hajj that you actually you know, put more effort, that it is harder on you, whether you go flying, whether you go by sea, whether you drive to there, or by any other means that makes it easier for you, by all means do so. You don't have to walk. That's not intended by it. Now, sometimes there may be some burden that accompany performing the ibadah, but that is not intended for itself. For some people, for example, it may be harder to perform the same ibadah. For example, ibadah the salah. Somebody with a full body, it will be easier for them to perform a ruku' and a sujood compared to somebody, for example, who lost a leg or with a prosthetic leg. It may, they may be able to perform ruku' or sujood, but obviously it's going to be harder on them compared to somebody with a full body. Now we say that they will be rewarded for their extra mashaqqa, hardship that they encounter to perform this ibadah. But to, for yourself to go and make it on purpose harder on you, you don't get extra reward. That's not intended. This extra mashaqqa that you're putting on yourself, it's not intended from, by Allah Azza wa Jal. That's not what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. What He wants, so al mashaqqa is not intended. What is... What is intended from Allah Azza wa Jal is to achieve a taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Achieving a taqwa from Sha'irat al-Hajj, from performing Sha'irat al-Hajj, is what Allah Azza wa Jal 
intended from us. And you know that taqwa is to actually observe the servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, obeying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to spend the time and the effort in obedience and observing obedience to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That is an objective of the Sharia. You see the difference? طيب. Alhamdulillah. Another, so we're still talking about why it is important to understand the objective. Another reason, which is some people, when they neglect al maqasid sharia, they actually uh, deviate from the ahkam of the sharia. Some of them may even conflict with some of the ahkam. They may even inadvertently reach the level of undoing the sharia altogether. How is that? Because they've neglected the sharia and they think they are following the sharia or observing some of the maqasid of the sharia because they don't look into the conditions of the maqasid of the sharia. Let's take an example. Some people, they may say, we in the West, in general, right? We are off on Sundays. طيب. Sha'irat Salat al Jumu'ah is that for people to gather, Ijtima' al Nas. The Ijtima' of the people is the Maqsid of Salat al Jumu'ah. Well, more people are able to join in on Sundays rather than Fridays. So let's move Salat al Jumu'ah to Sundays. And they think we are actually achieving maqsad sharia, which is for people an yajtami'u. What do you say? What do you say? We say no. We are actually, what you're saying is flies in the face of the sharia, because you actually, by doing that, you contradicted a bigger objective of the sharia, a more important objective of the sharia which is to preserve the rulings of the sharia from being changed and from being altered allah azza wa jalla legislated salat al jumu'ah on fridays and from the greatest objectives of the sharia is to preserve it and to maintain it from being altered and changed and this is exactly what that person is doing and then we say that even if you do that Different countries will observe different, you know, it, if it is, uh, most people are off on Sundays, that may not be the case at other countries. May, they may be more people off on Saturdays, some other people may be more off on Fridays in certain Muslim countries. So then people will actually have different uh, differences and will divide and will disunite. And that is not achieving the objective of, of the Sharia. So it is from the greatest objective of the Sharia to preserve it and maintain it as it was revealed, not to change it. So we have to actually weigh between the objectives of the, of the Sharia of Islam. A third reason for that, for, uh, or for, for uh, that it is important to study the Sharia is that it gives the person the ability to be able to tell if there is something that newly introduced into the life, a new matter that gets into the life of the people, we call this a nawazil, a nazil, something, a matter that didn't exist at the time of the Rasulullah and now it was introduced into the life, something brand new, a new problem. And we want to know what the hukum of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, even if you are not a mufti or a mushtahid, at a minimum, understanding the objectives will give you an initial opinion, will get you started. To you will be able to start a, a, a an initial uh, opinion whether this is halal or haram. Let me give you an example. We all heard about this new technique of cloning people or animals. Have you heard of it? Where you know sciences have advanced now, they're able to, for example, take cells from one person or from an animal and then through a you know scientific medical process whatever it is then they're able to clone an identical person or an identical animal to that person to that uh, living creature that they started with a carbon copy of it this is something new is this halal is this haram it may take time to be able to decide fully 
But if you know, if you look at the maqasid of the sharia, for example, we know that from the maqasid of the sharia is to be able to identify the degree of kinship among people. If you look at this case, now you're talking cell, you're taking a cell from one person and put and create and, and cloning another person. Is that a sibling of that person? an original person is is the original person a father now is this a son or daughter of them we cannot tell it's unclear what the relationship between the original person and the cloned individual is we can't tell siblings father and son what's the relationship we're not able and based on identifying what the kinship the degree of kinship there are a lot of rulings like inheritance, etc., etc., whether they can marry, their offsprings can marry one another or not. If the original individual is a father, then their children then become the siblings. They cannot marry one another. If the new clone person supposedly is a brother, then they will become like nieces or, or, or uh, cousins. Then they may be able to, to marry one another. So we lose this ability to tell what is the degree of kinship, what is the relationship now among the offsprings of both, and what is the relationship between the person and the clone person. So immediately we can say that it's impermissible because we lose all of these things. And this is one of the objectives of the Sharia to be able to tell what the degree of kinship is. Another important important reason to study the objectives of the sharia ah is that specifically for the mufti and for the mujtahid and for the person of knowledge to be able to tell to have tranquility if they make ishtihad if they give a fatwa knowing the objectives of the sharia ah and they that their fatwa does not contradict or fly in the face of any of the objectives that gives them tranquility and peace of mind that their fatwa that they've reached is correct. Because if they reach something, a verdict, an opinion, and then they look and they say, well, it contradicts so many of the objectives, then they know that there's something wrong and there's, this is not the right, correct opinion. They need to go back and study more and investigate and ponder upon the evidences and the text, nusus, to correct their, their verdict that they've reached. And if it satisfies and if it is in compliance with all of the objectives, then you know, alhamdulillah, this must be a correct opinion. Not violating any of the objectives of, of the sharia. Another great and last reason to study, the shari to study the objectives, which is a great reason, and this applies to all of us, Ya Ibadallah, is that when you know that there are objectives for the Sharia, ah, this is a reason to actually glorify the Sharia, ah, to actually appreciate more Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala when you know that the Sharia ah, that He revealed to your Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a set of rulings and uh, ahkam that is not haphazard, it is not pointless, it is not without objectives, but rather there are meanings and objectives that Allah Azza wa Jal intended behind them. It is not that this is the, these are the rulings, that they should be like this for no pointlessly, but rather there are uh, uh, objectives that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted behind it so that you thank Allah Azza wa Jal and you are more appreciative and more grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for this great sharia ah that he revealed to us, to, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to us. And from the benefits of knowing that is that it will actually revive the hearts and will encourage us to actually follow the Sharia, ah, to apply all of the ahkam of the Sharia ah, when you are conscious of all the objectives that are behind each ruling. You consider it for a moment. Consider a person who prays and doesn't know what the objectives of his prayer. He doesn't know why he is praying or she is praying. To a person who prays, same ibadah who is fully aware of the objectives and what Allah Azza wa Jal intended from these sha'air and from these ibadat, who understand why Allah Azza wa Jal legislated salah, can they be the same? The one who doesn't know why he's praying to begin with 
and the person who fully understand why he's praying, they cannot be the same. Their prayer is not going to be the same. Likewise, the sister, the Muslim woman and the Muslim sister who wears the hijab, but she doesn't know why she's wearing the hijab. And another one who wears the hijab and understand fully the objectives that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from covering up. No question about it, that the latter will actually wear it in a better way, will cover up and be careful about uh, covering herself and, uh, 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 and, and having a hijab that is fully compliant with the sharia ah rather the, than the other uh, woman who doesn't understand what the hijab is and what is the objective and who will maybe wear the hijab, barely wearing a hijab that doesn't even satisfy the conditions of the sharia ah which you couldn't tell if it is a hijab or not. Their practice is not going to be is not going to be the same. So this all tells us how great it is and important it is for the Muslim and for the mukallaf to understand the Sharia ah and the objectives of the Sharia ah and what Allah Azza wa Jal intended from us to achieve. Because this is, like I said, a summary of the Sharia. Ah. And now, when you practice and you submit to each ruling of the Sharia. Ah, you submit fully aware of what the objectives, what Allah Azza wa Jal intended from it and wants from you. And this is a great bounty from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala for those who understand the fadl, the great favor of Allah Azza wa Jal and what he intended from the Sharia. Ah. With that said, let's move on to another aspect of the maqasid and that is the characteristics of the maqasid sharia ah. maqasid sharia ah, the objectives of the sharia ah, have characteristics some of the characteristics of that is the first one is that these maqasid are taken and they are based on the evidences and the proofs from the sharia ah itself maqasid sharia ah is based on and the basis for them are proofs and evidences from the sharia ah itself in other words, they are derived from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In other words, they are taken from Al-Wahi, Kitab and Sunnah, from the revelation of Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala. They are not based on, one's, on a particular person's intellect or on a particular person's ijtihad. It's not based on ijtihad. You make your mind and you figure out a maqsad of the sharia. Ah. No, it is based, it is they are taken and derived, even the mushtahid, the role and the duty of the mushtahid with respect to the maqasid is to merely derive them from the ayat and from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is not based on ishtihad, whereby different, different people who are mushtahideen, they may end up with different maqasid. That's not the case. They are derived, de merely derived from the text, whether book or sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the evidence point to that. Some scholars, or some actually, not scholars, but people of knowledge, they deny that there are maqasid la sharia. Ah. But we say that the text in the book and in the sunnah, they point strongly that you see that Allah Azza wa Jal hints at and spells out the maqasid and the objectives of the sharia and some of them that there's actually there's tawatur from the scholars, from the sahaba, from the tabi'een that these are meanings that are objectives of the sharia. Ah. For example, the fact that sharia, ah, one of the objectives of the sharia ah is that it achieves people benefits. Sharia al Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal, one of the objectives he intended that the Sharia ah is muhaqqiqa li masalih al nas. It achieves the benefits of people, benefits in this world, and more importantly, the benefits in the hereafter. It doesn't contradict the masalih, the benefits of people. It actually achieves those benefits of, of the people, whether this is in this dunya and in the hereafter. This is a maqsad shari. And a lot of texts indicate that also from the maqasid, for example, is that people unite and they are on 
اجتماع الناس and اجتماع الكلمة that they have one word and they have one heart they are upon one heart and to unite this is one of the maqasid of the sharia of Islam يقول رب العزة والجلال ولكم في القصاص حياة يا أولي الألباب لعلكم تتقون here's another maqasid التقوى we talked about this before and we're revisiting التقوى is one of the great, greatest objectives of the Sharia. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And there is a life for you in, in the Qisas, which is the, rule, or which is the law of punishment. There is, there is a life for you in the Qisas, O man of understanding, يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Who have intellect and minds. O oh, man of understanding, that you may become muttaqeen among the pious. The scholars have said in this one ayah, in this one ayah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, there are three maqasid. Three maqasid that can be derived from this ayah. The first one, you figured it out already. Taqwa. Why? Because he said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may become muttaqeen. So this tells us what? That achieving a taqwa, tahqiq al taqwa is... A maqsad shari is an objective of the sharia. Ah. This is one. Second, to be wise and use your mind wisely. At-ta'aqqul. Why? Because Allah said, Ya ulil albab, O man of understanding, who use their correct understanding, who weigh matters in a wise way, who understand. So this understandment, understanding and at-ta'aqqul is a... a an objective of the Sharia ah, and also from the Sharia ah, is that people's life is steady and safe and secure and stable. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal legislated the laws of punishment so that people live a safe and secure life. Why did Allah Azza wa Jal legislate different punishment to punish people only? There is an objective behind that so that people stay away from committing crimes, from uh, doing different disobediences so that people's life become what? Safe and secure. So that it is stable. And that is why he said, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ hayat." You have life in the punishment. Allahu Akbar. How? Because then people will actually think twice before they commit shedding blood, stealing, etc., etc. All of these different crimes, people will think twice because there is a, 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 a uh, punishment that is uh, based on that, the consequence of that, then people will have to pay a price for that. Three objectives of, from one ayah. You see, from the ayah itself, derived. Another characteristic of the maqasid is that they are attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Meaning, it is Allah Azza wa Jal who wanted and established these objectives. Like I said, they are not the work of a mujtahid or of a scholar. They're not attributed to the ishtihad of one particular person, but they are these objectives of the sharia, ah, they belong to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who intended and set these objectives as object and these meanings as objectives of the sharia. Ah, and like I said, they are derived from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the, from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another characteristics of the objectives, all of them, is that they are universal for all people. They apply to all people. They don't apply to one particular person or one particular group and not the others, but it applies to all people in all places, not one country, but not the other. It applies to all countries, all people, wherever they happen to be at all times. They don't apply at a certain period of time and not other times. They applied, they, they were applicable and they were uh, valid at the time of Rasulullah and they continue to be still objectives of the Sharia ah today and they will continue to be objectives of the Sharia ah until the hour. Hence they are universal and if in a particular case we apply one objective and not the other, not because it is not an objective, but rather because one is prioritized over the other and since there is a conflict between the higher priority and the lower priority, we prioritize, we take the precedence of the higher priority, but still in other cases, the lower priority may be an objective of the Sharia in other cases. 
So sometimes we may prioritize between the, maqs- the maqasid, and we're going to take an example in a short time. Another characteristics of those objectives is, is that they are la- everlasting. They will last, they will not change, and they will not be modified. They don't they are not subject of ishtihad that can be true at one time and not true at another time, but rather they don't change and they are uh, fixed for the sharia as long as the sharia is there. And it is, these are the objectives of the sharia. So a person, even if it is a mujtahid, um, you know, obviously it's inconceivable that a mujtahid would come and say that. But let's say it is not up to a mujtahid, for example, to come and say, I am removing this objective from the sharia it's not an objective of the sharia he ha- doesn't have the he doesn't have the right to do, to say that they are from allah azza wa jal they are legislated by allah tabaraka wa ta'ala nobody can change them they are fixed also from the characteristics of the sharia of the objectives of the sharia is that like i said they achieve benefits they observe benefits of the people. Masalih nas They observe and they achieve the benefits of the people and they are just. There is no oppression in the objectives of the sharia for any person. They are just for every person. Also from the characteristics of them is that they are well established based on the text. They are well established and they are identified based on the text they are not based on the ishtihad of people, like I said before. The last characteristics of the objectives is that the objectives of the sharia, actually, they are in compliance with the, obje- with, with the uh, benefits of people. Yani sharia does not come with rules that contradict what the benefits of people are. Never happens. It is actually in accordance and in compliance and it meets the objectives of, I'm sorry, the benefits of the people and it is a a complete, perfect set of objectives. There is no contradiction between the objectives, right? And they achieve the benefits of all people. It achieves the benefits of people in this life and it achieves the benefits of people in the hereafter. In this life, it achieves the, peop- the benefits or, or the needs of people to, for, to eat, to drink, to satisfy their desires in a, in a legal way, right? All of these are needs of people and it achieves them as well as it achieves the benefits and the needs of people for the hereafter from al ubudiyyah and from obedience to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and from working to get the benefits and the rewards from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in the, here, in the hereafter. And all of this brings the khair and the goodness for people in this life. And you see that the sharia actually works for them, for their good life. If anybody observes those objectives of the sharia, they will sure live the best life and the happiest life. Because it achieves their benefits. Both dunyawiyya and al-ukhrawiyya. That has to do with akhirah. And dunyawiyya that has to do with this dunya. Okay, I know we're running out of time, but I know that we started a little late, so I'm going to take steal a little more time from the question and the answer, inshallah, and keep going, inshallah, a little bit further and talk about the history of the science of the objectives of the sharia. We said, maqasid al-sharia is a ilm. Remember that? We started, said, this is a science, a ilm. Ilm maqasid al-sharia, the science of the objectives of the sharia. When did the science start? Is this something new? Is this a science that is contemporary, like started 50 years ago, 100 years ago? What is the history of the objectives of the Sharia? We say that the objectives of the Sharia have been there for as long as the Sharia itself has been. It's not something new. It's not something that started recently, contemporary, but rather it is uh, uh, the objectives of the Sharia has been there for as long as the Sharia has been around. Yani from the very beginning, from the time that the Sharia has been revealed and sent down upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the revelation brought down upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because we, as we said, what is the source of those maqasid? We said al-wahi, al-kitab. 
and a sunnah. So the, the maqasid have been there, like I said, from the very beginning, from the time they have been revealed upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you see in the ayat, and we're going to see example, and in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hints and uh, reminders and pointers to those maqasid. And we're going to take a, a, some look at some of them. So they are the pointers to these maqasid. The hints to these maqasid are there in the ayat and in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the person who looks at the sayings of the Sahaba and their uh, narrations will find a lot of pointers, will, will find in a lot of times they actually... Uh, drew and diverted people's attention to these maqasid. They paid a lot of attention to them. And they were very care careful about those maqasid. And they pointed out, pointed them out, and diverted the attention of people to the, uh, to the, to the objectives and made sure to teach those who studied with them and those who came afterward, they made sure to actually uh, divert their attention and teach them that there are maqasid and what these maqasid are. And like I said, you find a lot of, a lot of that in their sayings, in the sayings of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, radiyallahu uh, anhum wa ardahum. But then you see that as time elapsed, since the time of nubuwa, since the time of the prophethood, as time progressed and as time elapsed and people, you know, there's a longer time that elapsed from the time where people exist to the time of the prophethood, they started to become heedless and ignorant about those objectives. They didn't pay as much attention to the objectives of the Sharia and they started to not know them, to be ignorant about that. And as such, they became heedless about the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. So instead of looking at the bigger picture and what Allah Azza wa Jal intended from the different rulings, they started to actually look at the rulings themselves and at the specifics and then started to question, why did Allah Azza wa Jal legislate this and why, why he did legislate that? Had they understood and had they noticed that there are objectives behind them, they would have understood, they would have understood those rulings in a better way. That's why today, for example, you see a lot of people question, why did Allah Azza wa Jal legislate al-hijab? Why did Allah Azza wa Jal legislate, for example, in certain cases that the inheritance for the woman is this and the inheritance for the man is for the male and female are different? Why is the witness, the shahada of the man is taken in certain cases and is more valued than the woman and in other cases the woman is more valued than the man, etc., etc.? They didn't understand the objectives of the Sharia, ah, so they started not understanding and questioning the individual rulings. You know what I'm saying? طيب. And then time elapsed, and then when the time came to for the authoring, you know, when this when the scholars have started to write the books, for example, books of the ahadith, books of the fiqh, and the different madahib and the different aimma and the companions of the madahib they started to write the books we started to see some hints of the to these objectives they started to be written so you find for example in a lot of the books of the fiqh for example a hint at the objectives of the of the necessities the five necessities of people necessity of the religion of preserving the religion the necessity of preserving the intellect al the necessity of preserving for example uh, the wealth of people of preserving the offsprings and of preserving the honor you find that they started to write about these and these are examples of the objectives of the sharia that came to preserve all of this this is an example of that. You, you started to find this in the, in the writings. And then, time, more time elapsed. Obviously, it wasn't comprehensive. Until the 8th century, Hijri century, one of the first scholars who started to take a more comprehensive approach as documenting those objectives is the famous Imam al-Shatibi. 
Al-Allama Al-Shatibi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his book, Al-Muwafaqat. He dedicated several chapters, a good discussion on this, on this topic of the objectives of the Sharia. But he wasn't very comprehensive. He took a good uh, shot at it, and he, it was a good starting point, but he wasn't, like I said, comprehensive. And in our times, more scholars and more people started to write about that, and there, will, and there was more interest in studying that. Uh, and so this is actually this series of majalis and attributing to the sources is a fair and just. I don't claim that I actually, this is my work and it is something that I came up with, but rather this is based on the work of some of the scholars, today's scholars, who actually specialized in this uh, topic of the objectives of the Sharia and did a lot of research and work. This is based on their work. May Allah preserve them and may Allah reward them. And one of the reasons, by the way, that the earlier scholars, Aimma, Aimmat al-Islam, for example, and the Aimmat al-Madahib, the one of the reasons they did not write specifically about the objectives is because they thought that they were well established in their mind. They understood them fully, and they thought that they were like we say today. They go without saying. They were well understood. They were well in the hearts and minds of people that they are the object objectives, everybody understood them, they, so they didn't see the need to document them in the, on paper. Now, like I said, since there are a lot of time that elapsed, since the time of the prophethood, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, people start to be ignorant and ignore them and overlook them and became heedless about the objectives, the need was revived that we needed to go back and understand this and look back at the objectives of the Sharia ah to have a fuller and a better and a greater understanding of the Sharia ah and appreciation of the Sharia. Ah. Let's see if we're able to go forward. Tayyip. Let's start, let's take maybe another, what do you say, uh, Abu, Yusuf, Abu, Abu Yasser, another five minutes? Or should we just... Any questions, brothers and sisters? Let's see. I know this is supposed to, from 4 to 4.15, was supposed to, a Q, to be a Q&A session on the first majlis. Let me see. If there are questions, uh, answers, I'm sorry, questions. If there are questions, we'll address them. If no, we'll keep going for another few minutes. Tfadl. Can we use the microphone, inshallah, so that the people online can use them? There's actually a handheld, inshallah in that little bag yes if you open it there is a handheld you know how to operate this inshallah yep let's use this for the questions inshallah طيب تفضل السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله شيخ when you were talking about the illa and the hikmah and the maqsad what's the difference between the wisdom and maqsad طيب so uh, brother yasir وفقه الله he was, it looks like he was sleeping. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's asking about, can we, re, can we uh, uh, go back and just quickly, uh, 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 you know, uh, recap. What is the difference between al-maqsid and al-hikmah, the objective and the wisdom? Remember we said that, we're talking about al-maqasid or al-maqsid. We said there are two, we consider two other terminologies that are pretty close so that, and, and some people may confuse them. So we said, let's consider, let's make sure that we don't confuse these terms together. So we discussed the illa, the reasoning, and the wisdom, al hikmah, right? And probably this may be better addressed if we take an example, right? Which is uh, the journeying that we took, that we considered before. Uh, very quickly, in a nutshell, al maqsid is what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted from behind, from, from those rulings. What Allah Azza wa Jal intended. The wisdom is the meaning that explains why Allah Azza wa Jal wanted this maqsid. And the illa is the reasoning which we said may or may not be intended by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. If we take the example of a safar, traveling, journeying, when you travel, you are allowed to break your fast. You don't have the duty. 
يعني the, the duty to fast is removed. You can, you can break your fast during the month of Ramadan. We're talking. And you can shorten the prayer, right? طيب. We say if you have to fast during the month of, while journeying, if during the month of Ramadan, and if you have to pray fully, the full number of raka'at, that will overburden you. That, that may put a burden, mashaqqa, on you. So al mashaqqa is the wisdom behind the permissibility to break your fast and to shorten the prayer. What Allah Azza wa Jal wanted, He didn't want the burden, obviously. Did He want the burden on you? No. Easing the burden. At-takhfif wa taysir Lightening the burden and easing the matter on you is what Allah Azza wa Jal intended. So that is the objective. The hikmah behind that objective is al mashaqqa is the hardship, the burden, the extra burden. The one who, is, who has to fast while journeying, this will overburden that person as opposed to somebody who is not journeying and fasting. With all the difficulty that comes with journeying. The reasoning for all these ahkam, shortening the prayer, combining the prayer, breaking your fast, is the travel. These ahkam are connected are on the basis of what? While journeying. They are linked to that. So journeying is the reasoning. Does Allah Azza wa Jal want from us to journey? Is it something that we all have to do? Is it something that Allah Azza wa Jal intend from us that we go and journey and go places? Obviously not. We don't have to. It's not per se intended. But if we journey, if we travel, then we are, these rulings apply. So the journeying is a description of the scenario of the case where you can shorten the prayer and break your fast. That is the illah. The illah, the reasoning behind this ahkam is journeying. You don't have to journey. Some people may never journey. It's not an, an intended objective. Is that clear? طيب. So we know what the illah is, what the hikmah, and what is the maqsid. Is it clear for everybody? Alhamdulillah. Another question? Tzadal. Can we use the microphone? Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So is it dislike to not break your fast while you journey? Is it I'm sorry? Is it dislike if you one do not break his fast while he journey? Dislike. 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 Yeah. It's a ruhsa. It is an ease from Allah Azza wa Jal. Disliking it is not a good thing. Okay. You may you may choose to not break your fast. You may choose to continue fasting. But this is a sadaqah, this is a taysir and takhfif lightening the burden from Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. So, you. so being grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal is to take it. Is to take it to break your fast. You may choose to continue, but you need to remember that this is a lightening of the burden from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and easing from Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, but definitely you shouldn't hate it or dislike it. Now, choosing not to break your fast is one thing. Disliking to do that is another matter. And not a good thing. No. Any other questions? No? Is this a good thing? Okay, alhamdulillah. Well, with that case, maybe we can go another five or a few minutes, inshallah. If there are no questions, inshallah, we'll, we'll keep going. Some talking about maqasad al-sharia, objectives of the sharia. Some people apply them, make mistakes with respect to the objectives of the Sharia. Mistakes that are with respect to the Sharia or in identifying the objectives of the Sharia. Let's take a look at that. What are some of the mistakes that people do in identifying and deriving the objectives of, of the Sharia? The first mistake that people make is that they may identify a meaning as an objective of the Sharia when it is not. They say this, is, this meaning is an objective of the Sharia and it is not an objective of the Sharia. Let's take an example. They say one of the objectives of the Sharia is equality. Musawa. We say no, it is not. What is, is justice. Al-Adl. Al-Musawa. 
equality among different people is not an objective of the Sharia. Some people say this is an objective of the Sharia. That's a mistake. It is not. So they identify as e equality, they identify equality as an objective of the Sharia when it is not. What is, what is an objective of the Sharia ah, rather is justice. Sharia ah of Islam, one of the objectives of the Sharia ah is to be just. That is that to establish justice among people and that every person gets what they deserve and what is suitable and befitting for the characteristic for their characteristics. And Allah Azza wa Jal created different people that are different in their characteristics, in their duties and their rights. Giving them all the same rights would be unjust. And Sharia came to establish justice, which is what one of its objectives. So that is why different people with different characteristics and different duties, they get different rights. And this is what the Sharia observe. One of the common examples is the man and the woman. And this is where some people in the West go crazy. They want to establish equality and we say that's not justice. This is unjust. It is unjust to, e to equate between the man and the woman. Allah Azza wa Jal created them differently. He gave, gave or uh, uh, put on each one of them different rights and different duties. They are, there are different duties for every kind and gender. And that is why it was only just that they get different rights. And this is what is just and not equal. Equality doesn't necessarily mean justice. And justice is what the Sharia ah is, strives to establish. And it is one of the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. Type. Another mistake that people do, and they don't pay attention to when they, at, when they apply or they identify the objectives, is that they don't look at the conditions of the objectives. Each objective has conditions that make application and implementation of these objectives valid. Otherwise, if you apply them and don't satisfy and fulfill their conditions, then you're not going to be achieving the objective. Let's take an example. One of the greatest objectives of the Sharia ah is to establish al to establish servitude that the servants is established and they uh, uh, establish the servitude to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Is that the servants uh, worship Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and serve Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is one of the greatest objectives of the Sharia, ah, no question about it. But this objective has conditions to make, it, to make it valid that are taken from the text, from the kitab, and from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Somebody who comes and invents a new act, act of worship and say, I want to establish the ubudiyya lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala upon something that there is no evidence to it from the Quran and from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and says, I am establishing this objective of the sharia, which is objective of, of al ubudiyya. We say, you're not. That's not achieving the objective of al ubudiyya because al ubudiyya has conditions that are specified in the Sharia ah, that are in the book and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Somebody comes and say, I want to establish al ubudiyya Lillah. So he say, let's go to the Masjid and start worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal by dancing. What say you? Is that, an ob is that achieving the objective of al ubudiyya We say that's not. You're not achieving al ubudiyya lillah because dancing is not a way of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. Another example, somebody comes and say, let's go and circle in the masjid and start chanting, who, 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 who. And they, we say, we're worshiping Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. We are trying to achieve this great maqsid. We say, we are not. Because this is not of the ways of worshiping Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is not something that is taken from the Sharia of Islam. You are not you are 
you think you are doing a ubudiyah lillah azza wa jal, but you did not fulfill one of its important conditions, which is to do the ubudiyah according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in accordance to what he brought forward. This is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So objectives have conditions. Unless these conditions are met, you are not applying and implementing the objectives correctly. Clear? Let's take the last one before inshallah Maghrib, uh, which is the wrong implementation and the wrong application of the maqasid. This is something that we hinted at before, and we'll go quickly inshallah, which is when they actually uh, apply it wrongly. For example, we did talk about the maqsid of the sharia of people uniting and gathering together. And this is one of the purposes of Salat al-Jumu'ah, ijtima' al-Nas, right? Ijtima' al-Nas in the masjid for Salat al-Jumu'ah is one of the objectives of the sharia. Somebody, we hinted at this before, like I said, somebody says, well, wait a minute, if this is the objective of the sharia, ijtima' al-Nas, this could be better done on Sundays. Because more people are off work and more people are able to come to the masajid and we will have a greater gathering. Ijtima' akbar. So this is what? what? What say you? Is this a correct implementation of the sharia? Maqasid al-sharia? Say no. You're not applying this maqsid of the sharia of ijtima' al-nas in a, in a correct way because you are violating and you are at odds with another greater maqsid which is to preserve the sharia from being changed and altered. Allah Azza wa Jal established and legislated Salat al-Jumu'ah on Fridays. Moving it is changing the Sharia. So you're not achieving the maqsid of ijtima' al-nas. You are changing the Sharia. You, so you are defying all the Sharia altogether. This is a wrong way of applying the objectives of the Sharia. Tayyip. I think we're out of time, inshallah. Let's stop here, inshallah. There are more... Uh, mistakes so but we'll resume after Salat al-Maghrib bi-idhnillahi ta'ala uh, let's stop here inshallah ta'ala and we will resume stay with us after Maghrib wa iyaakum barakallah feekum walhamdulillah rabbil alameen